So I'll give a, a brief introduction to the course. Let me just, uh, uh, Rona, I'm going to take moderator privileges away. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. And do stay and uh, participate as, as you wish. Uh, so I'll try and do this briefly. Um, don't want to spend an awful lot of time. Um, here be dragons, yes. Uh, that, that were sailing into uncharted water, waters. Well, not entirely uncharted. I think massive open online courses are starting to come of age. Uh, we can look at a brief history starting with uh, MIT's Open Courseware Initiative about nine years ago. Um, after MIT did the Open Courseware Initiative, um, making all of their teaching materials, exam questions, and uh, resources, available to the world. Um, about five years ago, a group of people in Canada, many of you are familiar with George Siemens, Dave Cormier, and Stephen Downs, uh, ran a massive open online course using um, basically available tools, WordPress, Moodle, um, the Twitter, and Delicious at the time, to put together a program of learning that anybody could uh, participate in. And this spawned a bit of a, a, bit of a MOOC movement. Um, and MOOCs particularly organized around uh, George Siemens' idea of connectivism and connected learning, uh, which then you know, developed a, a theme of MOOCs was the, was the learning philosophy that underpins them. But a year ago, uh, Stanford University ran a massive open online course of a very different sort. Um, Sebastian Thurn's artificial uh, intelligence course attracted 160,000 participants, um, but was very different from the connectivist um, open MOOC that, uh, that George and his colleagues were, were promoting. This was very much a big institutional MOOC. It was massive, it was open, it was online, but it was very much teacher-led, teacher-centered, um, and had a different, different instructional uh, design, a different pedagogy underpinning it. So MOOCs have come a long way, uh, and I feel that they are very important for teachers in higher education to be aware of and, and to use. And so we really wanted to go and try to do something like this and see, see how we got on. Uh, the, you will have seen this diagram, I hope. And this, tri this, this is based on a sketch we did when we were first planning the course. Um, the, the course is organized around a certain number of topics and activities and events. And we are today in week one on the 23rd of May at the uh, Open Academic Practice live online session. Uh, we'll have four more live online sessions, three of them with uh, guest speakers, and the final one to showcase your micro teaching activity. Uh, more on that in a minute. So, our approach, as Rona suggested, is still going to be dialogic. Uh, we will talk a lot in groups, and I promise I'll not keep talking for too much longer here. Uh, the idea of autonomy, you are responsible for your own learning. The teacher is a resource, not the source. And I'd say these approaches are common whether uh, we're teaching face-to-face -face in higher education or whether we're teaching online. So uh, we run First Steps into Learning and Teaching for new lecturers at Brooks. In fact, we're running a face-to-face -face version of it this week. I'll be teaching on it face-to-face -to -face tomorrow. And the concept of dialogue, autonomy, openness, social construction uh, makes sense in the face-to-face um, -face mode as well as in this purely online mode. Um, and openness to resources as well as practice carries on across the um, online face-to-face -face boundary. Social constructions of knowledge, um, we 
my, I, my colleagues and I tend to come from a social constructivist perspective. Um, knowledge exists in the community of, you, of, of people rather than consisting of objects out there that we grasp with our minds. We make connections, we make knowledge ourselves, and we build personal learning networks. And again, personal learning networks to me are not simply an online phenomenon. They are very much the um, network of friends, colleagues, peers, um, possibly even competitors um, in, the, uh, in, in the world in which we work. Um, somebody want to type the Twitter hashtag for Samer. Um, and we finally want to be research, form, research informed in all we do so that there's an evidence base for the practice, uh, whatever it might be. So this course is, a, is in, in effect a piece of research. I'll mention the research in, a few, uh, in just a few seconds. Uh, but we are studying the MOOCs. We're studying it for our um, own pedagogy, but we're also studying it for the purposes of uh, advancing higher education pedagogies generally. Yes, uh, the goal of the research is to evaluate the learner experience of the MOOC in order to stimulate discussion among the educational development community about benefits, opportunities, and risks, because it isn't without risk. Uh, risks of this approach. Um, and I just want to call your attention to the participant information sheet, consent form, and course evaluation forms, all of which can be found through this uh, link which is on the screen. I don't think you can actually click on that link on the screen, but it's, uh, it should be fairly easily discoverable through the WordPress environment. So please do everybody uh, sign up for the research. We need to get your consent separately. Marion has organized this, so thank you very much, Marion, for uh, organizing the um, ethics approval for conducting research in this environment. The course is built around three topics. Um, the First Steps curriculum, the UK Professional Standards Framework, and the concept of open, open academic practice. We'll go on to talk about open academic practice in some length a little bit later this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. Um, but I just wanted to make a few brief mentions about the First Steps curriculum and the UK Professional Standards Framework now. I did do an audio introduction to the First Steps curriculum. There is a link there. It can be found through the Moodle and through the WordPress. I haven't done an audio introduction to the UK Professional Standards Framework. So six topics in first steps, realized through resources and asynchronous dialogue principally. Uh, the six topics, uh, or subtopics, I guess, are here. The supporting learning, reflective practice, teaching small groups, giving feedback, lecturing, and evaluation. And these form a subset of the whole postgraduate certificate in teaching in higher education. So we're obviously in five, uh, five weeks not going to be doing the whole postgraduate uh, certificate, but we will be covering some of the key topics. Oops, hello, something's happening on the. Can I ask, uh, can everybody still hear me? Show me a smiley face to make sure that Okay, CJ, thank you. Thanks, Liz. Okay, um, the, somebody pasted a picture on the screen for just a minute. Uh, Liz, do you want to speak? Um, it's just a question from somebody about if it's deliberate that you're not on video anymore or if that's an issue with your tech or something. Oh, uh, no, I just, um, uh, no, it's not, it's not an issue with my tech. I just left my camera off. Um, would you like me to be on video? I can be on video. Um, we could do it. We could do it. Yes, no poll. Everybody who wants me to turn the video on tick yes, and people who don't want me to turn the video on tick a red cross. Oh, everybody wants. To <laughs> 
Hello? <laughs> Don't mind me. I, 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 sh I should just go, no, <laughs> just, to, just to confound things. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I, you know, the video sometimes consumes a lot of bandwidth and the internet can go slow. Um, <laughs> Lindsay, yeah, uh, I, no, I voted with you indeed. Um, um, the, the internet can go slowly and often um, not necessarily, at the moment I'm on a reasonably robust wired connection inside a university environment. Uh, some of you may be on camper vans in, in Donegal and uh, if we put a lot of demand on the system with video, it can cause the more important elements of the talk and slides to get disrupted. So. Uh, it's not always good practice to run the video and certainly not to run lots of video. Uh, if only the, in as I often say, if only the internet worked the way it does in the movies, everything would be fine. I remember years ago there was a, a film, I forget what it was, but you know, involved the 12 year old boy with a Sinclair ZX who takes over the, um, you know, US Strategic Air Command and saves the world from nuclear disaster. Uh, <laughs> you just sort of see this kid you know, typing into a modem and it going immediately out into sort of visual global. It just, it still doesn't work that way. Uh, one day maybe it will. So six topics in the first steps. Realize through asynchronous uh, resources and dialogue. Dialogue and asynchronous resources. The UK, asynchronous dialogue and resources. There we go. Uh, the UK professional standards framework is woven throughout this and we're particularly focusing around three areas of activity and three areas of core knowledge. Again, um, I'm not going to go into great detail about it here. There are links in the WordPress and links in the Moodle to the full professional standards framework and this, uh, this course, um, this MOOC, would form a substantial part of an application for associate fellowship in the Higher Education Academy of the UK. Um, at the moment, um, we are in the process of developing formal academic credit for the, for the MOOC type course, um, but at the, as I say, it's not, we're not there yet. There's a lot of university systems and procedures that need to be complied with before they'll credit rate a program. But the UK professional standards framework is woven throughout and we'll be particularly focusing on designing and planning learning activities through your activity three, teaching and supporting learning through the first steps curriculum and activity two, and throughout engaging in continuous professional development, that's CPD and activity which is largely around activity one. So the activities map onto the professional standards framework. Uh, the core knowledge uh, about your subject is going to be, I hope, displayed in some of your micro teaching. Teaching methods will be explored and the Higher Education Academy likes the idea that we use and value appropriate learning technologies. Uh, what could be more opposite than, than doing a MOOC in WordPress, Moodle, and so on. The three activities that uh, you'll be undertaking are a reflective statement, a collaborative bibliography, and the micro-teaching. So you should all be writing reflective statements sort of at the moment, if not exactly at this very precise moment. Um, but uh, by the end of this week, you should have posted a reflective statement about um, your, um, if, you, if you like, your origins as a teacher. Where are you coming from? And we've given a number of templates to these reflective statements. You don't, of course, need to use a template. Uh, you can reflect in any way you like. Um, but you might want to use the Higher Education Academy's structure, either the structure of areas of activity, the structures of core knowledge, or the structures of professional values to uh, shape your reflection. The collaborative bibliography will run next week as an activity. Um, again, these are all linked on the Moodle. I'm not going to 
go into a great deal about them here. And the micro teaching, which is the substantial activity that will occupy, I hope, most of you for the last two weeks of the course, where we're going to ask you to design and present a design for a piece of teaching. Possibly online teaching, maybe even likely to be online teaching, but it's not necessary that you deliver a design for an online piece of teaching. You may present a design for a seminar session you want to run. And again, there's quite a lot of information about that on the Moodle site. So um, micro-teaching is a particularly important part of our practice. Uh, we like to get new lecturers um, up in front of the group doing something. Um, how we do that and how that translates into an online environment is um, a challenge for all of us, I, I acknowledge. So we're very interested to see how you, how you rise to this challenge. There are, of course, multiple modes of engagement in the activities. Uh, blogs, community discussion forums, wikis. There's an open discussion room, which we'll mention at the end. I think John and possibly Ben was it, and Catherine discovered this. Um, but also, you might want to make use of participant-led social media, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook. So we quite deliberately have not set up Facebook groups or um, Google Hangouts because there is an element of this which needs to be participant-led. Um, if we're going down the massive open online route, there's a certain amount of capacity that tutors have to deliver components, um, but we also hope that uh, you will uh, create your own environments around the, the core of the course. These three activities are mandatory for those people who are doing this course for assessment. I think there's 16 or 18 people signed up to uh, do this course for assessment. We offered 25 places. So there may still be a few places available if anybody wants to get the official certificate. Um, and, and we're doing this intentionally to pilot an approach which would say we may be opening up an awful lot of our teaching to a massive open online model uh, that would be free, public, available for everyone, with running within that a smaller cohort of fee-paying participants who would um, uh, then receive uh, accreditation, certification, um, individual assessment, and so on. And we don't know whether that's going to be, if you like, a successful model, but in this age of um, uh, when will we know about uh, assessment? Lizette. Uh, Lizette. Um, Lizette, I'll ask her. Lizette, yes, uh, I'm not quite sure where the communication is, but you, I do have you on the assessment list. You are in my group. Um, I think I tried to pass a message off to you um, through a couple of channels. So there may be some messages waiting for you. Maybe they got rooted into a spam folder or something. Uh, but yes, Lizette, you're in. <laughs> Uh, no worries. Um, yeah, the activities are mandatory for uh, assessment and certification. Um, for everybody else, we do hope that you do join in and um, participate as fully as you wish or can participate. OK. Um, are there any questions at this point about the course before I hand over to Marion Waite for a brief mention of this week's sessions and reflective practice. Hands up for anybody who'd like to say anything at this point, or are you ready for us to move on? I don't even do Facebook yet. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'll try to minimize my Facebook participation. Um, I find myself going in cycles. I think I wrote a blog about it that uh, Eleni Zazani commented on. Um, that I seem at the moment to be in a in a low Twitter cycle. I used to you know, do quite a lot, and then I do less. And there's some people who are just absolutely, uh, absolutely furious tweeters. Um, Catherine, you joined the assessment group. Um, uh, there is a link on the WordPress and on the Moodle to assessment. Uh, the information should be there. 
Uh, Andrew asks, are all the assessment places taken up by now? No, I don't think they are yet. Uh, as of as of a couple of days ago, we had 16 people that did include Lizette. Um, there were about 25 names on the list, and I think amongst the tutors we agreed we could handle a maximum of 30 people uh, in the assessment stream. So, no, Andrew, it's not too late to join. Uh, thank you, uh, Liz, for posting up the link in the... And um, the, just as uh, for those, you know, CJ, uh, Liz has just uh, posted the link.